That's easy Straight up to and see. down. <laughs> Straight up and down to your right. <laughs> Stare into this one. Okay. On today's show, there's two types of men. Men who get it done, and then men who criticize the men who get it done. Which one are you? Kick you us ready? off. Kick us off. Oh! Here we go. Yeah. Woo. Welcome it's back. A- Welcome back to Just These Guys, you know? Yeah, on a wintry Tuesday morning. We got Mike on the mic. And Lance Parker. Woo! We got the pasta in the house. And the shrink. And the shrink, yep. Just a couple of guys, though. That music is so good. I wish I had this as my ringtone. Think we could make that happen? We could make that happen. (laughs) I will will make it happen. And then help everybody else to figure out how they can make it happen. Because I don't want it to be jelly. I will I will figure out how to make it happen. Of my ringtone. And I will figure out how to get this ringtone accessible to mm-hmm. any and all mm-hmm. just these guys listeners for a small donation of five hundred dollars. That's like a drop in the bucket. I wanna just give a shout out real quick to someone in your neighborhood is really nice. They've already gone out and scraped your windows on both I your know. vehicles. <laughs> and you do get up early. Get her done. Yeah. Do it now. Got to get her done. Do it now. Um, I've got some, I got some news this morning. Uh, talk about getting her done. Hmm. Um, and I'm, this is just a sneak peek preview, thrill, review, teaser. That's what I'm trying to think of. Okay. Somebody, not me, has made a video about the book. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. The book, 12 to How to Transform Your Mind. Mm-hmm. I got word this morning that somebody made a video about it. Mm-hmm. And they were asking me for the exact name of the podcast because they wanted to put it in the video to make sure. Yeah. So That's cool. Yeah, it's exciting. Very cool. I had a, a friend of mine. I'm trying to just gauge. She's actually a listener to the podcast, but longtime friend. And... Uh, she was with a group of ladies. Um, well, I guess I can say. And she was in therapy, several therapy sessions where they were going through the book. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, so they loved it. Sorry. That is not plastic. No, it is not. <laughs> But back to the book, they said they loved it. Yeah, they said they loved it. Went through it as a group. As a group? Yeah. Wow. And so... Wow. It'd be interesting to be able to uh, gauge. You can't really tell where book sales come from, can you? Mm Mm-mm. Yeah. It'd be kind of cool to be able to see where you had pockets of uh, areas where people were diving in. Part of the country. All right, I'm about... To... You're embarking on an adventure here. Everything is is gluten-free in front of you. Yeah, the, There's the pack down. I said. Yep. Man, you are a get it done guy. Yeah. So there for, is a, for, for everybody listen, to know, there for, is a, yeah. a layer <laughs> of just wonderful look. Like I'm imagining it as a cheesecake crust. They, I know yeah. it's brown sugar, mm-hmm. but mm-mm. what would make a better cheesecake crust? I know. And whipped topping. All getting ready. To come together. And slow down on the coffee part because you also got whoa almond milk with vanilla. Mm. I mm. told you. Mm. Mm. So <laughs> I'm so happy right now <laughs> that last week I said, "Well, it's not sweet. It's it's not as good." And you were like, "Don't tell me that." <laughs> Why is coffee louder than 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get on Who that cares? one too. No, really put it cares? on. Put it on the list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Need to get louder milk. <laughs> <laughs> so while I'm doing this, yeah. And thank you everyone for allowing me to take the time to prepare my morning enjoyment. <laughs> um, I have a new addiction. You do. I do have a new addiction. What's that? So. Probably two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. Hold on a second. Best part of waking up. Oh, my goodness. Is sugar in your cup. Brown sugar. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. With a gluten-free donut and gluten-free Oreos. I just found those. Good. Had grief. you had them before? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We we taste tested them last night and they're great. They taste different. I just you can't know exactly what it is, mm -hmm. but the difference is better. Yeah. It yeah. is. It is. It actually yeah. tastes better. It's just the slightest little difference, but it's almost like they're sweeter. They, they, I I salivated. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I took a bite, I'm chewing on I'm like, this is generating. Yeah. So and these donuts. Mm-hmm. That you get at all these, yeah, are it's I've amazing. gone through like twelve boxes. No, you can't not. I know I, it's crazy. I, I sent you the photo to tell you they're there at all these, and in yep. my shopping cart, I had ten or twelve boxes. Yeah, um, this is the remnants. I've I've really had to kind of impose self control because mm -hmm. I would eat a box a day. Oh yeah, easy. Yeah yeah yeah. That Easily. Good? So the whole point of this is that the gluten free life. Is a good life. It is. There is nothing. You don't have to really miss anything. Now, this is to the point of my new addiction. Mm. I have a new addiction, and it's Sam's Club bread. <laughs> I went from eating no bread because I didn't think there was a good gluten-free bread out there. Right, right. And I tried a few. Didn't like them at all. They were dense, and they were hard, and it was just like it was terrible. Try going to any of the the restaurant chains where they're serving sandwiches and order some gluten-free bread. It's the worst thing in the world. This Sam's Club. I love Sam Walton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sam's Club <laughs> bread is so good. I toast it. Really? And so I'll, I come up with excuses to go in and have some toast. <laughs> I put it on. I toast yeah. it for a month. Sandwich like, and everything. It's, put like marmalade on Oh, yeah. It's so good. So try it out there if you if you have even considered the idea that you might feel better getting rid of gluten in your life. Just try it. We, we have talked about it on, on the show before, but the brain is a physical organ that lives inside your body and where you think and where you feel and where you make your decisions is in the brain. Yep. So it only makes sense that if you're trying to improve your uh, life, if you're trying to improve your decisions, your uh, your character, if you're trying to improve your mood, if you're trying to go, you know, live the sober lifestyle, this is the important organ to get in shape and take care of. Mm -hmm. And whatever you put into your mouth goes into your brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then to be ugly... Once the brain cells eat whatever you put in there, mm -hmm. they poop. Mm -hmm. the, the cells poop, and that poop floats around in the soup that your brain is sitting in. So you need like antioxidants to get rid of the rust in your brain. You need a good uh, nutrition so that your brain is in as good a health as possible so you can think clearly, feel better, make better decisions Build better habits, build better character. Find yourself in different circumstances and situations in your life. And your brain won't be floating around in poop soup. And all you got to do, I mean, there's no sacrifice whatsoever other than you can't buy a, a Big Mac anymore. Yeah. But you make slightly different choices. Give it a seven-day trial. That's all we ask. Give it seven days. Just go gluten-free for seven days, mm -hmm. um, which includes beer, by the way. Unless yep. you want to go shopping for the high dollar gluten free beer, but gluten free for seven days and see how you feel after those seven days. And if you feel the same, go back to your normal lifestyle. But if you feel different, know that it's the gluten. Yeah. 
And you got you got some right there. Oh, oh I got some goodness right there. <clears throat> Your little flavor saver. <laughs> um, here's the real testament for me. I've always hesitated because I wasn't going to go spend seven dollars on a loaf of bread mm-hmm. when I can spend a buck, you know, ninety <laughs> for Walmart bread. <laughs> Still Walmart bread. White. It is so worth it. It's so worth it. Just the, the the way you feel so much better. And like you said, the mental clarity. Well, if you're a bread person, it's a great <clears throat> tasting bread. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big bread guy. Right. But I make grilled cheese sandwiches with the stuff. I mm-hmm. mean, it, it's good bread. Mm-hmm. And so if you're a, a bread aficionado, six bucks for a loaf of bread is not a big deal. Mm-hmm. So here's an example. And then we can move on. I was going to say we're... we're we're boring the audience right yeah. now. <laughs> We've <laughs> lost half of them. They're like, I'm eating my gluten. These guys are ridiculous. Um, Saturday morning, we had our kickoff to a men's uh, breakfast. Mm-hmm. And it's a men's new men's ministry. It's a men's group where we are going to uh, come together. We are going to connect and we are going to make a difference. We're going to make a difference in our families. We're going to make a difference for each other with our families. We're going to make a difference in the church. We're going to make a difference in the community. We're going to have an opportunity to, I kept calling it, this is what you, when you look around, there were 37 of us in the room. When you look around, you're looking at manpower. Mm-hmm. And the things that we can accomplish together are so much beyond what we can even imagine right now, especially when God is in charge. Look out. We're going to be able to do a lot of good together. And so I'm ex- I'm really excited about what is going to take place there. Every Saturday morning for anybody who's local, uh, not every Saturday morning, every first Saturday of the month, we're going to come together and have a breakfast and just connect. And then we're going to talk about a lot of the things that we've been able, we're going to celebrate a lot of the things that we've been able to do together and make a difference. Um, but as we had this, we had Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> now, I ain't going to stand here and tell you <laughs> that I am strong enough yet to say no to a Krispy Kreme donut. It's, it's almost impossible. So I said yes to five Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I had a Krispy Kreme or two. <laughs> and here's the deal. This is how this connects. The next day, I'm up. I'm giving a message on Sunday. I don't manuscript my messages, so I really rely on some, uh, you know, not only retention, <laughs> but some recollection, sure. some ability to bring up words that should be just natural words to be able to bring up. I've really studied it. I've ingested it, and I'm ready. Well, I'm going along, and I'm talking about funerals. It was a message where, well... You could go back and listen to it on gpwichita.com if you want to. But I was standing there and I was saying, now I want to give some of you some some release. I want to just make your day right now because you have struggled with the idea of should I, should I be buried when I die or should I be? And then I couldn't come up with the word. So I said <laughs> this. I said, or should I be, um, you know, a, a fire bath? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. A fire bath. And then I I was stuck on the fact that I couldn't come up with it. Dang Krispy Kreme donut. <laughs> and so what happened was I walked over to the other side of the podium and then I just stood there and I just said, what's the word? <laughs> and everybody, they said, cremation. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh. I said, pray for me. <laughs> And it's that quick. Yeah. It's that quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm telling you, I mean, I can't a, completely say and prove <laughs> the Krispy Kremes, but I'm telling you, I have a clarity when I stay away from it. There's a clarity, and it almost like every day it gets clearer and clearer and clearer. It's, no, my explanation to people, because I think it's important, is if, if you've ever had or known somebody who's uh, allergic to cats, yeah, and and how horrible that reaction can be. And it's quick. It's in, you walk into the room, 
and smell the air. Yeah. And there's an instantaneous <laughs> allergic reaction. Your eyes swell up, you begin to itch and sneeze, and you have to run out. Just mm -hmm. the microbes in the air. Yeah. The yeah. dander in the air. It's an instantaneous reaction. And that doesn't go away for a day or two. And that's exactly what happens when somebody like you and I eat gluten. There's an almost instantaneous reaction. The inflammation hits and just we become sluggish and, and it's difficult to think. And it lasts a day or two. So every time I look at a Krispy Kreme donut from now on, I'm going to think about the person who's allergic to a cat and <laughs> would consider eating a hairball. <laughs> that, that donut is like a hairball. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. Well, I just want to go ahead and acknowledge that or ask the question, did the Steelers make the playoffs the or something? Steelers made the playoff. Oh, man. Hard to tell. <laughs> Can't really even tell. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> it, I feel like I've just <clears throat> seven. I just wandered into. Oh, and it's the curse of the terrible towel. Um, in 2005 or something, uh, TJ Hushman Jada disrespected the terrible towel after the Cincinnati Bengals beat the Steelers and he wiped his feet with the towel. And they're, they're, Yeah. Well, Steelers went on to beat them in the playoffs and going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> and then and then uh, a few years later, um, a couple of years later, the uh, Indianapolis Colts. Mm -hmm. um, was it the Colts? Anyway, another team did the same thing. They disrespected the towel. They ended up losing in the playoffs. Steelers went on to win the Super Bowl. So this year, Indianapolis Colts' safety, after they beat the Steelers, he was running around disrespecting the towel, grabbing the towel out of people's hands, you know, stomping on it, making fun of it. Well, what happened to the Colts? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're and out. And what happened to the Steelers? Yep. They're in. So as I realized that, I'm like, hey, they're going to win the Super Bowl. Yep. It's the towel. Wow. You don't disrespect the towel. And at the Jaguars-Titans game, so and the Steelers were the playing. Jaguars. The, there were terrible towels everywhere <clears> in the stands. <throat> And earlier this year, the Jaguars had disrespected the towel. Jaguars are out. <laughs> yeah. Steelers are in. Uh, Pittsburgh's going to the Super Bowl. Start paying attention Get to the terrible now. towel. Wow. But well, the, the, it was interesting. The theme you wanted to talk about today yep. it kind of aligns with the theme I wanted to talk about. Cool. So you hit it, and I'll, I'll, I'll play well, second fiddle. So this whole idea of, of uh, there being two types of men, this is a, this is a quote from uh, Socrates, and I'll just pull that out real quick so that I get it exactly right. And ah, it wing goes, it. well, I could, I usually do. It goes something like this. It says this, all men, no, that's another one I had. This is the, <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> men can be divided into two groups. One that goes ahead and achieves something, and one that comes after and criticizes. Boom. 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 I'm telling you, you can just look at every situation and you see that. Yes. You'll see this group of uh, dudes that are hanging out over here in the peanut gallery, and they're, they're, they're in their own misery. They're loving each other's company. Because misery loves it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you've got a group over here who's just busy getting it done. And I want to hang out over here. I want to be a part of. That's that's what I'm excited about. This new men's ministry, this new group is going to be about getting it done. Yes. It's not going to be about sitting around talking about it. I've, I've you know shared with Tish last night, you know, one thing you may not know about me. But, you know, growing up, Boy Scouts, growing up, my mother, you know, very much... Uh, uh, on me about acting right. And, um, you know, if you take a pen from a business, if that's not your pen, that mm. is stealing. Mm. I mean, just the driving home of, of manners and respect and integrity. integrity. And then I went in the military. And, you know, there's a lot of male bonding that goes on. You go through some, you know, some challenging times together and you face things together. And, the most important element of it all 
what you know uh, honor you know dignity respect honesty you, you did not break those codes mm. you know um stolen valor you heard of this concept mm -hmm. where somebody claims to have a ribbon Mm -hmm. that they did not actually earn. Somebody claims to be a SEAL. Somebody claims to be a veteran. That is so um, important to military people, to veterans, that there have been officers who, as they're getting promoted through the ranks and part of their promoting kind of process, they'll pad their resume a little bit, mm. claim a ribbon they didn't really earn so make themselves look better. When they get discovered... I can think of three officers who committed suicide Oof. rather than go through the humiliation of having to answer for stolen valor. You do not. And so, you know, do it. Do not criticize. Mm -hmm. Shut up. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do it, go do it. But don't sit around and chirp and, and complain and criticize what somebody else is doing. If you're not going to do it, shut up. Yeah. And, and, it sounds like a pet peeve and like Lance is being a, you know, a whiner when, when people behave in a disrespectful, cause it just, it just, that's my, that fires me up when somebody's rude or disrespectful Yep. and it goes back to that for me, that the honor code that you treat everybody with dignity and respect, you can have fun, you can play jokes on people, you can do all sorts of things. But you don't dishonor another person. You don't disrespect another person. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times that either comes from a, a really deep insecurity within yourself Thanks. when you do that. Or... Oh, you mean yeah. <laughs> the criticizing. Right. Okay. <laughs> or it comes from, like what it says in Proverbs sixteen eighteen. it says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Mm -hmm. And so it comes from pride. And so, yeah, I... I I have spent way too many seasons of my life in the peanut gallery, not necessarily criticizing others, but not being in the group that's getting it done. Well, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, observe, do your thing, move forward, live your life. If somebody else is out there getting it done, great. Not everybody has to jump up and run and, and take care of things and do things. That's fine. There's nothing wrong. It's good to live a nice, simple, easy life. That is, that's perfect. But if you're going to turn and look at what somebody else did and what's coming out of your mouth is negativity, right. is criticism, is complaints. Mm -mm. Yep. Mm -mm. You know, one thing that I've even taken it so far. My adrenaline's flowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in my own uh, personal experiences, like a lot of times I would catch myself sitting around and, and uh, sitting around, <laughs> sitting around, here we go, sitting around watching like uh, American Idol or something. Sure. The Voice. Sure. And there's this person on there who is giving it their all. Yeah. They might be a little pitchy. And I'm over there in the peanut gallery sitting in my chair at home talking about how pitchy they are. And the reality is they're getting it done. Yes. They're on there. And so I've learned to uh, catch it. And so, uh, you know, it, it can go that far to where you, you start to catch yourself and, and change your perspective and change the way you look at this stuff. So let's go get it done. And that is what Mason Rudolph is doing. Yes, he is. You know who he is? Heck yeah, I do. That guy has really been resilient. <clears throat> Talk about getting stuff thrown at him from the peanut gallery. He has been resilient and he has stuck in there. And I love the fact that, that he is having that success now that he's gone through. I remember when he had that big run in with who's the big old dude from Cleveland. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Cleveland and, Browns, a yeah, uh, linebacker. Yeah, and that, that Garrison, Garrison, I think is his last name. but that Miles. Was, yes, so that whole experience right there could have been something that just basically ruined him. That was a, that was a career ender. Yeah, yeah, but he withstood it. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, being in the Steelers organization is a really good thing because it is a solid organization that can go through some adversity and come out on top. And so, yeah, I really love the fact that I remember when he was at Oklahoma State. Well, he was a stud. For those who don't know what we're talking about, Mason Rudolph is a quarterback. 
Uh, much like Mike Snow here. He's very much like me. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for the knee, you would have been Mason. <laughs> right. If it wasn't for the knee. Yeah. But he's a quarterback at Oklahoma State University. Just a great quarterback, throwing bombs down the field, dropping dimes in on people. Mm. Just a stellar quarterback, won all sorts of awards. Uh, 2018, he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers in the third round. And the, the, the actual thought was that he could sit there a couple of years behind Big Ben Roethlisberger. They're both physically about the same. Big, strapping, 6'5", 240-pound men. Yep. You know, statues standing back there. You can't knock them down. And the thought was that... <laughs> Clang! I'll have that removed. That was a linebacker coming at you. <laughs> back to the show. <laughs> That was rattling. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be careful. <clears throat> but the thought was that he would take over for Ben. Yeah. And then uh, Ben got injured, uh, and so Mason got a chance to start a couple of times, and he didn't do so well. Mm-hmm. And immediately the Boo Birds came out, and people started, you know, criticizing him and calling for his head, and and <laughs> we were out of control today. <laughs> But it just was a rough couple of years. And so Big Ben announced he's going to retire. And, you know, there's Mason sitting there in the wings. Yep. What do the Steelers do? Oh, yeah. They go out and sign a former Pro Bowl quarterback to a big contract, bring him in. And then they draft Kenny Pickett number one in the in the draft to bring him in. Mm-hmm. And I- Mason's like, what the... I forgot about Trubisky. Yeah. They went out and got Trubisky. Makes the story even better. Yeah. And so in uh, that year, Trubisky gets the start over everybody because he's the veteran former Pro Bowl quarterback, and he stinks up the joint. Yeah. And not 100% his fault, but he stinks up the joint. So they thought, what the heck, we were going to draft um, Pickett, bring him in, see if he's going to be our future so they start him, and he does okay. Yeah. Everybody's giving him, you know, a little breathing room because he's a rookie. You know, local kid. Local kid, rookie, not great, but he's not terrible. Right. And so last year, or this year, they go through the the training camp, and they're, you know, trying to figure out who's going to be the starting quarterback. Pickett's number one. They give number two to Trubisky. Mason Rudolph was given the permission to pursue other contracts at other teams Mm -hmm. and then when no big offers came he came back to the Steelers and and there's an interview with him where he says there was a point where he was considering maybe to just go work in commercial real estate Wow! and then he talked with the Steelers they brought him back in on probably a veteran minimum contract one more one year they bring him in. And so the start of this year, Pickett's number one, Trubisky's number two, and Mason is number three. And Pickett's pretty good. He's, you know, does a good job, but then he gets injured again. And they stick Trubisky in and they proceed to lose three games. <laughs> Just, and you were not happy. No. Along with Steeler Nation. No. And so they decide what the heck. Let's shake it up a little bit. They put Mason in. And for the first time since 2018, for the first time in 50-some-odd games, the Steelers break 400 yards on offense. He's out there standing tall, throwing, hitting people down the field 30 yards. He has more 60-yard TD passes than all other NFL quarterbacks except one, and he's only played three games. <laughs> He has just lit the scoreboard up. We're calling it right now. This is a made-for-TV movie. Oh, yeah. If they win the Super Bowl, oh. can you imagine? With Rudolph. Ooh. I, I'm, I'm going to start rooting for the Steelers. And the I even lived there. The, the character really comes in. This is a, a, a short 30 seconds, but this is an interview after one of the, one of the games. Mm-hmm. Steelers haven't won here since 1983. You're the quarterback who led them to this victory. I mean, there's a lot of fans over here. What was this game like from your perspective? Because you knew that this was going to be one of the most hostile environments that you've played in. Yeah, uh, just a lot of 
gratitude. I mean, I thought I'd be, you know, riding the pine the whole year, and things happen, and uh, thankful to God for giving me the opportunity. And to come, to come out here in a hostile environment, like you said, and to get a win is, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna push us forward and bring the guys together. I know you said you were working on your resume this off season. This is getting it done. And like you said, grateful. Yeah, grateful. Uh, he was on the sideline. Yeah, but he was humble. He was just waiting for his opportunity. Wow. And then this other clip. They're playing Rudolph the Red Nose right here, here in the stadium. Your first start since 2021. What worked for you tonight? Uh, first off, I want to say. Um, just, just so, so thankful to my creator, Jesus Christ, for giving me the opportunity to play this game and, and, and for carrying me through the dark times and getting me back here for, for a special moment. But uh, we, we did a great job across the board. Defense was on fire, creating turnovers, giving us short fields. I'm, br- I'm but like I said, I, we lived there for uh, almost two years, and uh, I'm breaking out the terrible towel. Record-setting performance. That's awesome. Record-setting performance in the last game, the ninety percent pass accuracy. And the, and here's the deal: in the last game, mm-hmm. it was in the rain. In the rain, the mud, the rain. Yeah, and he was throwing dimes. Mm-hmm. Just awesome. And I love those stories. It's so cool. But the the character. Yeah, and that and that's what allows those things to transpire. Is, is is the character the, you know, getting out, getting her done, yep. doing things, and and doing it with um, with character? I mean, how do you how do you sit on third string on the bench for two or three years? How do you do that mentally? How do you do that? You, You've you know, got to have a grip on your pride. You have to have a grip and a higher power. Mm-hmm. So very clearly, he has been relying on on his Lord. Proverbs eleven two: When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. And so beautiful. What and, a great example. I know. I watched uh, interviews with him four years ago, and you know, like before or after a game, and and he you know wasn't performing very well. But being a psychologist, as I looked at him, what I think, because I'm not analyzing him, Mm -hmm. but I'm analyzing him, but just the wide-eyed and the breathing up in the chest and the the tension and the the flushed face. And I I was like, this guy is overwhelmed. The Mm. the stress, the pressure, the expectations to be the next great quarterback that that are on his shoulders to carry on from Big Ben's legacy and, and the pressure he's putting on himself to perform at that, you know, premier level, you could just see the stress and pressure that was emanating off of him. And that, that's kind of what it looked like during the game is he was just, you know, under a lot of stress to a high expectations to perform great. And, and his, you know, passes would fly high or he'd make, you know, decisions too quickly. And it just looked like he was under a lot of pressure mentally. Yeah. Um, you know, about his performance and that, that, Crimpled, 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 is that a word? Cramped. It can be now. Kinkled, impacted his performance. <laughs> <laughs> but when he got pulled off the bench, you know, three games ago, mm-hmm. he's playing with house money. Yep. Yep. True. You know, I, it can't get any worse. Yep. Trubisky stuck up the joint. They've stuck me at number three. What, you want me to come in now after you guys have tanked the season for us? You know, we have to win out. To even get to the playoffs, and now you're going to put it on me, right? So no pressure, none, none whatsoever, zero expectations on him, and he went out relaxed, yeah, and just looked like you know Big Ben Roethlisberger uh-huh. standing there, people hitting on him, throwing the ball, just did a great job, and it's all character, a hundred percent, character and humility and. And that in the interviews, you know, first thing out of his mouth, mm-hmm. you, know, you just did this 400 yard game, your greatest quarterback performance in Steelers. Uh, I just want to thank my Lord Jesus that Christ saved me. Mm-hmm. That's the first words. Yep. It's not about him. And then second words, team. the team. Yep, team. How great the team was, how wonderful the line did, how easy they made it for him. I mean, there was no, no me in that whole 
yeah. thing. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I tell you what I really like is um, it seems more and more like I just saw a post-game interview with uh, J.C. Stroud, I think is his last name. He's the quarterback, rookie quarterback for Houston. the uh, Texans. Houston, yep. Texans. And um, he had on a uh, T-shirt with uh, Jesus in the uh, crown of thorns. And so it used to be they would say something like, well, I just want to thank God. Right. Jesus is coming to the service. Mm-hmm. Jesus is the one they're talking about. Even he said, oh, right. I just want to thank my Lord Jesus. It's a, it's beautiful. It's a it's a revelation that's coming. I, I met a guy, a couple, and it is this simple. I met a guy a couple of weeks ago. Um, life's a mess, a mess with his family, mess in business, mess, 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 mess. Just, just angry, irritable, stressed. And um, we met, came in the next week. He's like, you know, I've, I'm, I'm really doing a lot better. Um, I've changed what I listen to on the radio. I don't listen to the rock and roll anymore. I listen to the Christian music. If I put stuff on YouTube, it's a sermon. I read my Bible. And I just feel so much calmer. <laughs> It's pretty amazing that we all have to discover it for ourselves. Sure. At some point. Sure. Hopefully, at some point, we discover that, yeah. Well, And I Sometimes. like the word, we may make that the, the headline for this podcast, of manpower. I like mm-hmm. you said that. Yeah. You know, your group's coming together, and this is really manpower. And when we, ladies. Yeah, we're not putting the ladies on the sideline. We're just talking about getting the dudes going. Well. And it's a it's a mindset. When we say manpower, we talk about be a man. We're not dissing the the biological gender of females. Right. What we're talking about is the character of men. Mm-hmm. Of what you know, not a boy, not a dude, but what is a man? And those are principles and, and characters that we want in our women. Yep. You know, uh, commitment. You know, good character, commitment, quality, uh, follow through. Uh, honesty, integrity, trustworthy, loyal, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. That, that's being a man, mm-hmm. stepping up and taking care of things. Those are great qualities for women. Those are great qualities for teenagers. Those are great qualities for anybody. And for all of us, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Self-control. Yep. He... Without self-control is like a city whose walls have been torn down. They are left vulnerable to attack. Yep. With self-control, you're no longer vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good stuff, Doc. You have to... <laughs> turn down. No, say it again. Good stuff, Doc. Okay. It, and it'll, it'll play now? Yeah. Good stuff, Doc. Oh, wrong the button. Wrong button. <laughs> Take us out of here, Mike. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in today. We are just these guys. Have an awesome week. Go Steelers. Go Steelers, everybody. Root for the Steelers this weekend. Leave comments. uh, Maybe they line up. Maybe we got a little Steeler Chief action. I would love it. In our future. I would love it. Awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in. We got Mike on the mic. I'm Lance. Yeah, have an awesome week. We'll see you next week. How about I've never that? heard it through to the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what perfect timing. <laughs> 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 what was that? Did the electricity just go out? <laughs>